Hey guys, and welcome to number 7 in the appetizer series. Um, today we're going to take a look at how to create the materials for the glass and for the wine. Um, so yeah, let's just open up the file we prepared last time, which is called episode 7. And that's what we're at right now. We um, textured and materialized. Now we just we created the material for the table. And now it's all about this glass and the wine okay so um, those materials are a little bit advanced maybe and by the way we're also going to use a texture which might sound weird because it's glass so glass doesn't use a texture but um, in our case we do because we are going to basically separate this glass into two materials one, one glass that is well just glass and the other one that is red because the wine actually touches the glass and it gives just a much a much nicer result if we're actually texturing the glass as well you'll see how that works so let's just start with the wine first. Let's just take the wine and then let's just hit the slash key. Okay, slash key. So now everything except for this glass, uh, for this wine is hidden. Let's just go to solid and that's what it, was, what it looks like. And now just to, be, to make sure, I can't see any wrong things, but let's just go into edit mode, select everything, control N to recalculate all the normals. So we are sure that there's nothing wrong because that can give us quite a few problems. And once we did that, let's go into the materials. Okay. And now, um, I'm going to set up this material a little bit differently than we did in our in, in in the picture I actually showed you because I noticed the wine is a little bit too dark. It doesn't really uh, let through enough light. So we're going going with a slightly lighter color. You won't really notice in the final render, I believe. We'll see. We can still adjust it. Um, so yeah, let's create a new material. And now about the color. Um, wine is red, and it is really red, okay? So let's just give it a really, really red material like this, okay? But it's not quite that light, it's a bit darker, it's something like... I'd go with that, okay? So in my final file that I already showed you the, the picture, it's somewhere around there, okay? Which looks realistic, but it's kind of too dark, I thought. So we're going with a slightly lighter color, like this, okay? About the specular part, uh, once again, an intensity of 0.5 is okay in this case, but we're making the specularity a little bit colored, okay? Or actually quite colored to something like there, which is quite a strong color, but it's going to look quite all right. We can still change that later on as well. Um, we just have to change that to word ISO, and I think that's called word ISO, I'm never really sure. And let's just change the slope to 0 0.04, okay? Um, yeah. Then under the shading tab, as always, let's just leave that as it is. And then we get to transparency. And this is actually slightly tricky to set up. Um, now, for those of you who don't know, there is C transparency and ray trace, okay? C transparency, if we um, turn the alpha down over here, you can see it just becomes transparent, like, like a ghost or something. And that is not what you want. You want to go with ray traced, change the alpha to point 0. Point, actually, just to 0. Um, and change the IOR to 1.33, okay? Now 1.33 is the uh, IOR for water, and in our case it's wine, but wine is fairly similar to water, I believe. And anyway, it's uh, we are artists, we can create whatever we want. Um, if, it's not quite, if it's not entirely accurate, that's okay. And um, the IOR is actually influenced by the density of an object, the, the denser, the higher the IOR, and wine is nearly as dense as water, so it's not really a big difference. And now, um, the big thing here is filter, okay? Right now you can see this looks like water, with a strange red reflection. But if you change the filter up, you can see it starts to turn red, okay? And um, we want to go with a value of 0.9 for now, okay? And now about limit and fall off. They are a bit tricky to understand. Limit is kind of um, how far light can tr travel into the wine before it gets com completely filtered, okay? And the fall off is kind of... Um, the follow for the filter effect. It's it's a bit weird. We're going to talk more about that in the first steps and preparation series in, well, in the next 10 episodes or so. It will take a while because it's quite bothersome, or not not, not bothersome, it's actually fun to make them, but it's quite, quite quite intense work to actually figure out all the details. So yeah, it'll take for some more episodes, but um, for now let's just set the limit to one. And the fall off to actually, let's just test render this. And um, to test render, we actually need something in the scene. So let's just, um, with slash unhide everything, let's just take this glass and this as well and 
actually everything besides that and the table and all the light because without the lights it's fairly boring like this control i h now everything is gone except for the wine um well the camera is gone as well but we don't need the camera we don't need to adjust the camera we can still use it like this now let's just pre press f12 okay that didn't work my fault i didn't want to press um h actually i wanted to press alt h to unhide everything m and then let's move all this to a second layer like this okay once again f12 And now you can see this is supposed to be our wine. Um, it's not too bad. It looks a bit weird right now. Um, because of the way it's actually refracting things. But that's basically okay. Um, it will change quite drastically once we enable the mirror. Uh, you'll see it in a second. Now one thing I want to change for sure is um, the depth. Okay, And the depth is a bit tricky to explain. It's like right now... If you're looking for, with the camera from over here, then the light ray passes through this surface and then through this surface, and then it shows what's behind over here. And that is possible with a depth of two because it's two surfaces that it passes. But if you have the glass also, then you have a glass, glass, wine, wine, glass. Glass, which means six, okay? So we'd have to work with the depth of six, of six in my opinion. Um, we can still adjust that later on, but right now let's go with six. And you can already see, um, right now it took um, 3.75 seconds, and now it will take 3.74. Okay, that's not really a big difference, but it will change some, uh, some after actually including the rest of the, the objects, okay? Now this is still fairly dark, um, but I, I, I used some reference images, and actually... Um, it tends to be pretty dark, uh, red wine, okay? Now here towards the edge, it should be a bit lighter. Um, let's just see if we can actually um, achieve that in a way. Okay, um, so I uh, made a few adjustments here because, as I said, I cannot really take those numbers from the other file because I'm trying to achieve a different result. And I found what, what works best is if you go with a color slightly lighter than what you had before. So um, with just about... Uh, the brightness in the middle, you can also co copy the hex code 880800 if you want to have the exact same colors I have. And then a filter of 0.9, fall off 1 and limit 1, and depth of 6. Um, yeah, it just, it, it's much redder now, and the other thing just was too dark for red, but you can still change it afterwards and it will, it will change with the mirror as well after all. Okay, now about the mirror. Um, and by the way, what you also have here is the freshness, okay? And that just decides on, as in mirror, um, different viewing angles of this object. For example, if you see something here that's like facing straight to you compared to this thing that's straight, uh, facing over there, um, a different transparency is achieved. But uh, in this case, it's kind of um, not a good idea to use that because there's going to be the mirroring anyway and you won't see it in the end. But it's quite an interesting setting after all. Once again, we'll cover that more in depth in the first steps in preparation series then. Now about the mirror. First of all, let's enable it. And now we want to change the reflectivity to about, uh, let me see, 0.45. Okay. And now you can see if we render that. Now it will take some more time probably. Yes, it does. You can see it's just a completely reflective thing and a, a little bit of red shines through but that's not really really what we're going for so that's way too reflective now but we want to keep this 0.45 setting we just want to change the um the freshness okay and oh and one other thing we also wanted to make it we want to make it so that it receives transparent shadows okay because it's surrounded by the glass and if it doesn't receive transparent shadows um then it can give problems Okay, now you want to make it so that the freshness is set to 0.1.6 for now, and the blend to 1.6 as well. And the freshness kind of decides um, after what angle it actually starts to become reflective. Okay, you can see the faces that actually face you straight on, they are not uh, reflecting at all, reflective at all. And then towards the outer regions where they are actually facing away from you, they start to be very reflective. And the blend is actually deciding how strong this transition is, okay, and how sharp it is. And with zero, you can see it looks like this again, and with five, you can see, that was a bad example, with three, you can see it's a very sharp transition. And with 1.6, actually, in my opinion, it works best. 
let's just see if that is true. And I guess it's not, okay? And you can see why in a second. First of all, we have too much reflectivity going on over here. And second of all, that's the important part. If we look at um, the original image, let me just find it. Then you can see we've got this very nice uh, kind of wave effect going on, okay? Wherever there's a wave, we have this uh, slightly more reflective area and then a less reflective area. And right now, in our case, everything is... You can also see the difference, but it's well, it's pretty much uh, too reflective overall. So um, we want to change that. We want to change this to 1.9 for now. And the blend to 1.8. Now let's just render this, let's let's save it for a change, it's always a good thing to do. F12 again, and let's see what we get. And that looks much better, but I think we also want to turn down this value here to 0.3, and that actually to one point, let's just go with 1.9. So it's supposed to be a, a, a quite subtle effect, but uh, at the moment it's still pretty overpowering. Yeah, now you can actually see um, the refractions from the wood table shine through there, you can see the reflections, and it, it looks quite nice, okay? So let's leave the wine like this for now. Actually, we could make it a little bit, it's, it's a bit too red right now, let's make it a little bit darker, like this. Like, somewhat like this, let's see once again. And, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty decent, okay? Now you can, if you want, give it a slightly purple touch, if you're like a very, some wines have a slightly purple touch, but anyway, you can, that's up to you, you can use whatever you want. You can also make it a, a white wine. Anyway, that's it for the material for the red wine. Now with Alt-H, let's bring everything back. Oh no, we, we cannot do that. We have to grab the glass over here, move the glass to the first layer, go over here and move the wine to the second layer for now, okay, like this. Now, for the glass material, um, we are going to use a texture for the color, okay? So this color here has no effect at all afterwards, but for now um, it does because we, don't need, we did not yet assign a texture to this material. So we're going to leave it at white for now because this way you can see it won't influence the color if you use the filter effect that we just did with the other material. So we are going to use the um, the diffuse shader as it is. Oh, and by the way, I did not uh, explain that with the other materials yet. Diffuse is kind of like what is lit and what is shadowed. What, what is what is lit and what is dark. And the specular is just the reflection, where um, you know the straight reflections from the lamp. So diffuse is quite usually, especially with the transparent materials, it really doesn't matter a lot what you use over here. Okay, so uh, Lambert is quite all right. Next thing is specularity. Once again, word ISO and actually quite similar settings to before, 0 0.04 for um, slope and intensity of 0.2 at this time. Glass isn't as reflective as wine, is that true? I don't know, but it looks it, 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 look, it looks just great the way it does, I believe. Um, we can leave the color here as it is because we don't have a colored glass and even if glass usually doesn't color reflections. Anyway, shading as always, leave it as it is. And then about the transparency, once again, ray trace. And then we want to go with a IOR of 1.618, okay? The IOR of glass is essentially a 1.45, I guess. But uh, we are artists, we can do whatever we want, and I, th I just thought 1.618 gives us a nice result. We can play with that afterwards, or you can play with it if you want, and see how it uh, behaves. Now, about the filter. We want to set the filter all the way to 1, okay? And... Uh, alpha to 0 0.05, by the way. We don't want it to be zero because usually glasses aren't completely transparent because even if you have them in the washer just for once, they already start being a slightly milky, okay? Um, so 0 0.05 is really a very subtle influence of the diffuse color. Um, yeah, what did I want to say? Exactly, we're gonna set the filter to one, which means that this color affects um, the color of the, uh, of the material 100%. But since this is white, we cannot see the effect, okay? Between 1 and 0, you can see it's a slight difference. Actually, let me just put that all the way to white. Now you can see it's no difference at all. And that's okay because we're then using a texture to actually influence that. Uh, we're using a falloff of, of 1 as well, and we can actually leave those things by def as default, okay? Except for the depth, okay? Because right now, if we render this, you can see 
that's what we get. Now it looks quite nice over here and over here, but as you can see, over here as well, we have the diffuse color of the material, which is white. And it's, it, it appears gray because it is slightly shaded. Um, and you can see, if we look, oh, here we have the problem and here we have that issue. And that is because the rays have to pass one, have to pass um, one surface, two surfaces, three surfaces. And from here on it only renders things in diffuse color because we have only a depth of two. Same over here. The ray passes uh, this surface and this surface and then over here it renders this part just as solid, okay, which is not what we want, of course. So we have to think about the depth. Um, in this case, four seems to be an appropriate number. One, two, three, four. But we also have the wine in between, which makes one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So six seems to be appropriate once again. Um, however, we'll see if that's, a, if that's enough. Let's just render this. And yeah, this looks actually fairly nice. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. If you know Abed from um, Community College. Anyway, um, next thing we're going to do is we are going to, let me just see, uh, select the mirror, okay? Because right now you can see that it's not mirroring anything. And that's usually not the way it is. We have a slight reflection going on even with gloss. Or actually, in our case, quite a strong one because... Um, I'll show you that later. In our case, we have a reflectivity of 0.6, which is fairly high, actually. A fractional effect of 1. 1.6, uh, I'm sorry. And a blend of 1.6 as well. You can see what that looks like over here. A slight reflection on the edge going on there, which looks quite cool. Oh, and one thing I forgot to adjust is the depth of the wine. Let's just go over here. Depth of the wine. And if we increase that depth, then it allows interreflections, okay? Um, and that just means, let me explain that on the glass here. If I look to over here, okay, then I can in on here I can see this part being mirrored, okay? And then in here I should see this part being mirrored, okay? And then in here um, I should see the environment being mirrored. But it could also be that if I, if I take a glance in here and then the rays kind of bounce back and forth, okay? And that just describes how often those bounces, bounces can happen and still be considered in the reflection, okay? And two is not enough. Let's go with three. Um, that was the wine material, right? Okay. We're going to do the same thing with the um, glass material. That just means it can, it can bounce like boom, boom, boom. And that's enough. We can still adjust that as well. Let's see what that looks like. Let me just pause. Okay, and that's what we get. Um, and you can see this nice reflection here towards the outer uh, edge of the, of the glass. And you can also see this uh, gradient effect here from white to slightly bluish. And that's actually quite cool because you can see over here in the final image, you can then with color, uh, with color correction get this nice um, transition from blue to a slightly darker blue. Okay, and that's, I think that's always quite a desirable thing. And now that we're okay with that as well, uh, we might as well bring both things together. Let me just see if I forgot something. No, of course not. Um, one thing we also need to set that to receive transparent because it's supposed to shadow itself. And then we also, also uh, tack it over here. Perfect. Now let's just bring back the, um, the wine. And one thing to consider is that it took 12 seconds before using this the, the reflections, and now it takes one minute and seven seconds. Okay, so you can see, um, calculating ref reflections is quite a, a time intense thing. Uh, it really increases your rendering times, but it just gives a great effect and it really adds to the realism. Now, what I don't like in this case is all those reflections. Okay, so we'll have to turn that down later. But for now, let's just see how it turns out in the end. Okay, so let's just. Um, did I not just move that to over there? Oh, we have it on both layers. That's okay as well. And now let's just render that. And once again, going to pause the recording. Cool. So it's finished. And you can see now we have a stunning 2 minutes and 18 seconds. 
So you can easily see where all the render times have come from, especially from mirrors. And now that we have two mir uh, objects in the same scene that mirror things, it's even more intense. But it is necessary, otherwise you won't get the right idea. And now you can also see the spectral reflections are now being um, colored by the wine. And it gives quite a cool effect, in my opinion. Um, if you don't want that, you can just change it. You can just turn down the reflections on the glass, because they are not even... I mean the specularity on the glass, because they're not even that important since we have reflections. But uh, Or you can just... Um, turn down the intensity if you want, but I, I actually like it this way. But you can see one problem. Um, this this wine is basically red, or at least very dark, but it doesn't really influence the color of, of the glass, of course. Um, and if you, you can see on my final image, it looks like this. And I really like this dark effect on the glass itself, because on, uh, this red effect on the glass itself, okay? So how to achieve that? We need to make it so this glass is basically the way it is right now, except for the area um, in here, okay, where the wine touches the glass, okay, this area has to be red, or I want it to be red, okay, um, so how to go about that, let's just hide the wine, or let's just um, unhide it, and move it to the second layer only again, and now let's look at the glass, we need to create a texture that is then UV mapped onto this glass, um, so that it makes everything white, except for that part in here that we were talking about that has to be red, okay? And in, to achieve that, the first thing we have to do is we have to set up a seam, okay? And um, we can do that best by just going into edit mode, by alt-clicking on one of those um, edge loops, and then you can see it actually created an edge loop from top to bottom, splitting the whole thing in two. Now we're going with control, that's the wrong button, control E, um, mark seam, like this. Then we're going to split the view, we're going to open the UV image editor, we are going, we're creating a new image, new image. Let's make sure we have alpha unchecked, because otherwise it's going to be a transparent image. Let's go with 248 actually, by 248. 124 would be enough as well, but yeah, that's just a little bit better. And let's call it um, colored colored underline glass now i'm never really sure if it's color colored or colored because there is like an american and a british version i'm just going with colored it's, it's basically the same thing right okay so now we have a new image here now let's select everything and you can see it's already automatically unwrapped in a very strange way let's just hit u and unwrap and you can see this thing going on and actually, if we just select this edge over here, and if we hit Control Plus, and you can see where it is. You can see that's the lower end, and this is the upper end, okay? And somewhere around here, we want it to be um, red in the end, okay? Because that represents this part in here. Um, but we'll, we'll achieve the red effect in the um, texture, a node, texture node uh, editor. So here, we're just going to make it white so we have an... Um, a factor uh, factor texture, so to say, afterwards. Let's just select everything. Let's with R rotate it so it actually fits better. We can even scale it up a little bit. Uh, the better you can use the space, uh, well, the better because um, a texture takes a certain amount of, of space in your RAM wh while rendering, and um, it takes the same amount of RAM whether it's um, whether it is um, a very colorful texture or not. So the more you can use this texture, the better. Okay. But, yeah, we could also go f with something like this, okay? Actually, let's just do that. Let's just go with something like this, okay? Like this. Cool. Now you can see over here it created a UV map uh, in the object data uh, tab. UV map. And that's what we're going to use. Now we are going to switch to... And this is, again, a, a bit advanced. We did, not yet, we did not yet talk about that at all in the first steps in preparation series. But you're going to the, um, text, uh, to the texture paint, okay? And now you can see what happens over there. And now we want to make it so that um, we can actually paint, okay? So the way we do that is quite easy. We are going to tab into edit mode. We are selecting only those edge loops that we actually want to paint on, in this case, this one, come on, and then with Control plus, 
I think our wine went up to there. Let's actually uh, hit one more so we are sure. Control I and H. And now if you go back to texture paint, you can see if we go to that thing there, you can see um, this button there, only the things unhidden are actually being displayed, okay? And now we should be able to paint in in here, okay? Um, yeah, and you can see a funny optical illusion going on over here. It appears as if those lines were actually going like this because of the overlaying um, net. Anyway, now we can go to texture, uh, to over here, and uncheck all of these, okay? Because they are basically made so that you cannot paint through faces, but because we hit everything we don't need, you can just turn those off. And then we can essentially start painting. But you can see nothing happens. And that's because we need to actually change the image, uh, choose the image first, in our case colored glass, you can see it's black. And now we can, uh, we have to go into edit mode, I'm sorry, edit mode, select everything, colored glass. And that doesn't work, let me give me just a second here. Alt H, select everything, colored glass, and here it works, okay? Now you can see we have the colored glass and we have this thing laying over it. Now once again, we need to select that edge loop there, come on, like this, here we go. Control I, H, everything else is hidden, so like that, let's go back to texture paint. And now we should be able to paint into that. And you can see this way, just let's just go with the strength to one and the radius to something like 80. And now you can see if we paint over here, it automatically paints in the corresponding um, space over here in the texture. And uh, yeah, and if later on we use this, those coordinates to map that texture onto this um, glass, then we actually have it in the right spot. And now one other thing we have to do, actually, we have to um, go back to object mode. We have to go to the second layer. We have to choose the wine, M, move it also to the first layer. Let's go back to the first layer. Let's go once again back to texture paint. Okay, that's wrong. Um, object mode, let's select the glass again. Texture paint. And now, unfortunately, we cannot see the wine, but now if we go back to object mode, we should be able to, if we go to textured, you can now see uh, this white part there. And that is from what we already um, painted in, okay? Let's go to black over here. Let's just paint that uh, back a little bit. And let's just make the um, the, uh, the curve. Okay, this is this thing defines the curve, how the fall off of our brush is. Right now it is quite soft. We want it to be more like a little bit sharper. Okay, so let's go with that for a second. Oh, that's even worse. Let's go with this one. Okay, that's way too sharp. Okay, you know what? I'm kind of making a fool out of myself here. Um, let's just paint everything completely white with a very sharp edge. And now let's go in with um, a black a black, uh, a black, brush. Let's go with a softer... Um, with a softer brush a little bit like this. So we have a slight fall off. Oh, that's not enough. Like this is not too bad. And now let's just paint in up to exactly just above the wine, okay? Like this. That shouldn't be too bad. Okay, now, now the reason why we have this stuff over here, okay, which looks completely wrong, is because um, we mapped this according to that this texture according to that UV map to over here, but then um, this um, texture is actually being repeated over the whole material and therefore giving us this, those weird and wrong um, texturing things, okay? But you don't, we don't have to worry about that. The important thing is that if we hide the wine, you can see the part where the wine was is now actually white, okay? It, it appears to have different colors, but that's just because the lighting isn't always the same from the lamps, okay? And even in OpenGL mode, in texturing mode, you can see the lamps actually affect your scene, okay? 
Cool. Now we have this image, and now we have to create a texture that actually um, that's actually put together according to um, to this uh, to, to this texture to this uh, image. So the way we do that is the following: we are going to node editor, and we're going to to texture, and we're going to new. Actually, let me just see. Yeah, we're going to new texture. Now we create a new texture. Now we are going to use nodes, and you can see checker, which is kind of the input and the output. Now, recently, uh, for me, Blender crashed when I tried to delete the checker. Let's just save the scene. Let's just delete the checker over here, and it seems to work fine this time. And now let's just go to input a texture, or actually not the texture. I'm sorry, input an image. Okay, um, open, and it's this one. This is the image, which looks like. This. Cool. Now, we want to make sure that according to this, um, according to this texture, we mix together two colors. Okay. And we do that by using, uh, by using two uh, unicolor um, textures. Okay. And that is a bit difficult to create. Now, the way I found works quite well is just to create two textures, set them both to blend. Okay. Then let's go to the to the ramp on both of them. And then let's just delete this second thing with delete and here with delete as well. Now you have two completely white textures. And now for 003, we're going to change the color. And we're going to change it to something like, let me just see. Something like there. Something really, really red like this. Like this. Okay, that looks quite all right. Now you have to do those two textures. And now back in the uh, texture nodes, let's just select the previous texture again. We are going to import two textures actually, shift D, duplicate that. One is 003 and one is 004. Actually the other way around. Now we are going to use um, a mix node, shift A, input uh, color mix like this. And we're going to use that as the factor and that and this as the white part, okay? Now you can see what happens over here. <clears throat> and now the important part is that we actually now using this texture and we're going to use a UV, UV map, and use the UV map to uh, map it onto the glass. And we're going to use projection flat, that's okay. And actually one thing I don't like is that I cannot change how it is being mapped. Um, I'm okay, so we have one problem here. Let me just explain that for a second. Right now, if I, um, you can see at this, this is what it looks like with the UV mapped um, texture. The problem is that the image we we mapped onto here um, is smaller <coughs> than the actual UV map. If you look at what it's like in the UV map editor, a uh, UV image editor, go to edit mode. It should actually show that. You can see, that goes over this. Therefore, we can see this white part also on other parts of the glass where we don't want it, okay? And that is a problem. Now, apparently, we cannot really adjust that over here because there should be a separate um, tab called Im image mapping. And since we cannot do that, we need to change one thing. We need to go to the uh, node editor. And we need to change this to be a, a texture, okay? So let's just duplicate that again, okay? And now over here, we need to create a new texture, image or movie. We need to load in this image over here. We need to set it to UV, okay? And we need it to, I think, just clip. Like this should be okay, perfect. You can see now it doesn't repeat because if we change that to repeat, then you can see we got it several times. We don't want that, we don't want it to be clip. Perfect. Now, um, next thing we have to do, we have to go to UV map there. And now in the node editor, we have to delete that and we have to use shift. Uh, you have to use this new texture as our factor value. And now you can see it should work theoretically. Now what we're going to do, we are going to make sure that all those are disabled because we don't want them to influence the color of our glass, only this final one. Now we're going back to solid view for now. And now we're just going to render this like this. And I just go, I'm just going to pause the recording. Okay, so um, 
it finally finished after four minutes. <clears throat> and now you can see what happens. Now we actually have this red um, coloring of the glass over here. And you can also see this line down there. Now this line is a bit too thick in my opinion. And in order to change that, we're not going to adjust the, the, uh, the texture, which would be a pain. We're just going to um, unhide the wine, going to textured mode. We're going to edit mode there. We're going to grab this most outer region in, in um, edge select mode. This one as well. And let me just see that one as well. No, not that one. Control Z. This one. Oh, crap. Where is it? Oh, here it is actually. This one. Okay. Back out of um, wireframe. Let's just pull it up a little bit. And we want to go to texture. That's what we said. Textured. Like this should be fine. It doesn't matter if it's not completely even. I mean, after all, wine is not completely even on the surface. Of the uh, of the glass, I like that. That's actually perfect, I guess. Cool. Now um, we are pretty much done with those materials. As you can see, it looks not bad. Um, right now, it still looks a bit weird and not quite the way we want it. And also, one problem I noticed: now that I've actually um, used transparent shadows, you can see you don't really notice them anymore, and that gives an appearance as if this glass was floating in the air. So maybe we have to adjust that later on in a way. I'll try to figure something out, and if not, we're just going to um, increase the alpha value on the glass, and if that doesn't work either, we have to use a second glass without transparency to actually create the shadow, and so on. There are lots of ways to achieve the same effect. Um, one thing's for sure, we cannot use caustics, which would be very nice, but that unfortunately doesn't work. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I'm sorry about it being such a messy tutorial, it was a bit difficult to create this one, because uh, sometimes I found, myself, I found myself being unsure about certain things as well. And also because I changed certain things from the original script, so to say. But anyway, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any kind of questions or comments or suggestions or whatever, post them in the comments below the videos. Um, thank you for watching and see you in the next part.